Hello and welcome there to another episode of the Cliff Notes podcast, where we ask a leader and find their way. Uh, today I've been joined by uh, Michael Lynch, CEO of uh, Praxi, uh, where they're making business processes intelligent. Um, he's coming from an early success on uh, Broadway, where he starred in Fiddler on the Roof and Les Miserables. Uh, easy for me to say at this time of night. Following from that, but previous to the current role, leading Internet of Things at SAP with a focus on uh, manufacturing and, and visualization. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Michael. Uh, absolutely. Nice to be here, Tristan. Well, um, I, I hope you didn't have so many uh, problems with your words and, and lines. And I imagine um, your your history on, on Broadway <laughs> has, has uh, made you less tongue tied than me. <laughs> oh, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. The elocution lessons. Yeah. The simple way to do it. College is les mis. Um, so you don't have to do the obelis part, uh, but <laughs> that's the easy way. Yeah, so uh, I had a, a fun stint singing and dancing, and uh, and that was on some television shows. And then I got into video games uh, in Los Angeles, which led me to solid modeling and 3D visualization. And then we built platforms for um, lots of manufacturers who, we what the previous company, we would do visualizations in 3D and 2D, et cetera, and, and markup, and it became the the technology basis for 3D and PDF, if you've ever seen that. And then uh, we sold the company to SAP, and then I uh, ran their Internet of Things division in Industry 4.0, um, which became kind of the Leonardo platform, and it's all integrated now, and uh, and then started Praxi. The, the conversation is not so much around Internet of Things, but it does sort of um, connect in and connect up to the sort of uh, business processes and, and, and collecting data. But um, where, where is Internet of Things for you and, and that connection with manufacturing? Because some people think of that as, is that a connected fridge or a telephone or a widget or a, or, or my um, Hoover going around on its own or whatever? And some people, it's it's where are items in my, uh, in my factory? Uh, where are my assets and, and tracking them? And wh where was Internet of Things for you? Well, you know, I we got involved with that at SAP, uh, you know, 10 years ago when it was kind of the hot topic and, you know, uh, magical things and all those kinds of uh, books were coming out. And, and basically it does span that. But what, you know, my learnings from this, from being prior to SAP was bringing lots of manufacturers. They were already doing the Internet things. I mean, edge computing and machine data was in you know, all that analysis was going on. So I kind of grouped it into a couple areas. You know, we met with dozens and dozens of companies, and, you know, coffee makers, and everybody was trying to tell you when to refill your coffee via your phone app and all that kind of stuff. Um, I never saw that as that compelling. And, you know, people who do have connected fridges today, you know, don't really use them to, hey, I need some more milk. It's not, it's not that useful. Um, I think that in the manufacturing context, it's hugely useful. And, um, using that data and i'll get into it traditionally but to, to wrap up the internet of things i think it's another another digital source in which to gather intelligence to do things with to optimize manufacturing at the end of the day it's all you know oe and how um how optimized you can make your manufacturing and there are lots of different ways to do that but all of them require that you be digital so i view a iot and ai and those as, as technologies that can dramatically improve things if you're digital so the first step is to get digital Great, great. Yeah, no, I mean, we've had other guests on the show who've been um, sort of reporting on, on on oil wells or pipelines or different pieces where the, the technology has been out out in the field. But it sounds more like um, the, the, this was technology sort of inside a plant or inside a, a space, um, which was more the direction we were, we were going to be talking about today. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about the sort of role of, of sort of digitization and, and AI and, and the sort of learning um, in the shop floor. Um, or from from top to, to shop floor, or whichever way around, it sort of it needs to be a cycle. Um, and I mean, what what's brought you to that space, or where where are you seeing the the sort of current environment and bottlenecks that that sort of encouraging you that this is a space to change? Well, you know, uh, Spotify is a really interesting example. Um, when when I was growing up, everything was driven by what was on the radio, so there was these core ways to get data, and then as Spotify and other applications and Apple's iTunes and everything, people started listening to more and more different varieties of things. And so there came this idea of the long tail. And what that means is all the stuff that it is listened to five or six times versus the stuff that's listened to a million times. If you add up all those five or six times, the long tail is just as big as the first chunk. It's just very, very long. 
if that makes sense. If you can see a visualization of a graph where the top songs are listened to on the left and it goes down to till there's a song that's just listened to once, the long part of that tail is as big as the front. So the analogy there is that when you're in a manufacturing plant, you have the star uh, or the hit songs, which are your ERP and your CRM and the core applications. But the long tail is every other thing that's going on to optimize manufacturing. And so when I went into manufacturing plants, I would see these, uh, you know, hit song applications, if you will. And then the long tail was covered by Excel sheets and whiteboards and paper. And it's a massive amount of information that's being managed, whether those lean processes, Vives, uh, uh, Kaizen processes, you know, you name it, uh, 8D processes there, um, or different workflows for engineering work orders or whatever. There's tons of it that's all being managed in Excel production scheduling. And so the genesis for Praxy was how do we take all of this long tail stuff and get all of the benefit of software, the digitization, the benefit of visually uh, understanding and, and, and visibility into everything. And so that's where the idea came from. It was just by being in plants and seeing this problem everywhere I went, even, even really high quality and, and larger manufacturers will have a tremendous amount of Excel. What they've done generally is um, how to solve this has been, you know, have a big IT department that tries to write applications for the core parts that are missing out of the core applications and or get uh, a vendor or a system integrator to extend your core applications. Both of those are expensive and slow and, and have problems. Um, and so that's what we built Praxy to go address. Mm -hmm. And I mean, is why do you think there is so much of this sort of uh, useful information and, and it's all going to sum up into uh, into into metrics of, of parts shipped or, or, or um, failure rates and uh, what what we want to know, um, but the, this this sort of the rest of that data is just is sort of dispersed. I mean, is it is it because everyone's unique or is it just it's exactly no one's that it, it's exactly that it's ve it would be very difficult for because if software vendors could do it, they would do it. Um, if they could build an, uh, a scheduling app that everybody could use, they would do it. But the reality is everybody schedules differently. So Excel is the best answer right now. And so our idea was, how do I make an enterprise application as easy as I can make PowerPoint and then deliver a framework for uh, a Gemba Walk or a, or a scheduling application that's really, really completely configurable to that user so that they have a completely tailored application that you couldn't get in a normal application. Normal application, relational database, your system integrating it to, to extend it, and it takes months and months and months, and, it, and it's not cost available, so you just stick with the spreadsheet. In the Praxy world, we turn that around in you know days, if not week, days or weeks, really low cost, and you now have a custom app, which is a SaaS app like everything else, but is designed to how you work. Um, the, you know, the alternative is to buy a bunch of tiny little vertical apps, which don't do what you want and then try to connect them with connectors. And so that's why this space exists in Excel sheets. Mm -hmm. And just to keep it in that sort of practical space and that sort of understanding for people who maybe aren't, uh, aren't overly digital <laughs> in their, 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 their background or their wants at the moment, um, I mean, is this a, this is a tool that's in the hands of, of, of machine operators or, um, uh, or QA or whatever on the floor. I mean, what 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 are we talking about? Is it is it it's something adaptable and something that, that there's ownership of, or it's a it's a large uh, rollout. It's a large SAP. It's a large. No, so so that's a really good point. Um, we call Praxy, uh, and by the way, Praxy actually means the practical application of knowledge. Um, that's where it comes from the Greek word that means that praxis. And so, practical is the point. And so what. Praxy is, is a digitization platform. So the idea is, if I need to create an application for scheduling, or I need to digitize all my A3s so I can know where all these fixes are, etc., you can just digitize that and, and start really inexpensively. But it's all part of a platform that allows you to then add your 5S, uh, your Gembas, your whatever you want, your, your work orders, um, and you, you can use this platform to build out all of those over time. And then you've got a unified platform of data structures and, and ability to roll up data across them on a unified capability that allows you to, to replace the Excel with actually enterprise scale stuff, but you can start very small and very focused on vertical apps. Okay, great. And and I mean, what's the, the sort of the plan or the rollout? I mean, what what's, 
this is just replacing Excel or is this doing something else for us or um, like wh where, where's the ownership or what's the, what's the change that we're getting uh, by doing this? Well, so um, replacing Excel is not the point. The point is, is, is fully software enabling processes. So those processes might be uh, the kinds of things you're, you're at a bottling plant and your scrap gets too high the machine data comes in, we show you that the, that the scrap numbers have reached a red point. It sends out an email to uh, uh, and uh, information to the manager as well as the operator. The operator then, and we'll get into the AI aspects, gets a whole bunch of prompts from AI and um, uh, work instructions to do certain things. That then um, uh, gets brought into an overall application. So it's tracking the, the downtime and scrap, et cetera, of the line. And all of that goes into a command center obeyer room. Now, you people are doing portions of that today. You can get an and on board application or other things like that. But then you have the work order and the A3 and the action management. And all of this is integrated. So the replacing of Excel is just where the problem is today. That's how they're trying to solve the problem. But the problem is reducing scrap and reducing downtime in that case and you can build an integrated application that works exactly like your plant needs to work to address that so what you get is lowered scrap lowered downtime improved oe all of the things that you're trying to drive with process improvement mm -hmm. i mean you've mentioned uh, a good few things there that are, uh, are going to be people might be familiar with either as visual management or whiteboarding out or, or doing out on paper in the shared space that, that's a perfect example a huddle board you know, a standard SQDC stand-up board. 90, 90, almost all of them I've ever seen have been uh, paper on a board. And so there's no messaging, there's no AI, there's no anything because it's just a visual group of paper and people then will take that and try to put it in Excel and create reporting. But more often than not, it, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then for, for transparency, we've been trying to work with this to, to introduce it to some of, some of our, our clients. The, the issues or what, what has been raised, what's our performance, but then all the action items that are going to be taken away. Um, and there isn't that cycle of bringing that information back around or someone's got to have gone and manually entered all this stuff. Um, and is, is that that's what you're helping? Uh, right. So ex exactly, Tristan. So imagine a digital version of that. And what's great now is you can get an 80 inch television for under a thousand bucks today. So you've got the big visual um, aspects that used to be great about the whiteboard. The reason they did them big and visual was because of that. So you have a digital version of that and you're putting your end of shift data in and you're getting calculations on your first time quality, your first pass yield, you're getting all of that information dynamically. And then if there's an issue, you generate an A3, a digital A3, or if there's an incident, you generate a digital incident, which has actions. Those actions that get assigned right there to somebody, they get an email saying, you've been assigned. They click on it, it opens the assignment. They they then are being tracked against the seven things they're supposed to do that might be across A3s, it might be incidents, it might be Gemba walks, it might be anything. And now there's you've got this digital version showing you your metrics that are matter to you in forms that are familiar to your clients because we digitize to your workers because we digitize the forms you already have. Yet everything is now digital and the work side of it, the action items are being managed, and you've now created an optimized you know, process that is completely transparent to management as well as the workers. Sponsorship of this podcast has been brought to you by Holding Bay, a digital web agency. Holding Bay specializes in working with B2B companies like manufacturers to build better solutions and drive better sales funnels. So if you would like to build a web application or improve your branding, and sales funnel, get in contact today, holdingbay.co.uk or call us on 01273 044019. And then every Monday people get notifications, here's where all your actions are. So you're, you're, you're digitizing the information gathering and that you do it as much from machines as you can but a lot of it is sort of line managers at the end of shift putting in issues that they ran into etc but all of that's digital and you do it in the form that they're used to doing it in but now you've got the, the full cycle of information gathering analysis action finding and 
and and taking uh, you know uh, stock at a management level of where you are on addressing all these issues. And all of it is now digital. And now, which we'll get to, you can drop AI onto it because it's all digital. I mean, so, so that just that understanding, and then yeah, let's come into to where does AI fit? Was um, you you're almost getting you i mean you've got to set this up uh, uh, to to work it through but you're almost getting the process and that handoff between functions or or between cells um for free that the, the the information is not in one place and only in one place you you've got the visual for 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 displaying it um uh in, in the nice open space uh, where everyone can huddle around but the the flow is going to take it on to to those other functions um, to to make sure that things are actioned or have come back or service is done or whatever those pieces are that, that are being highlighted. Right. And the more of those processes you digitize, if you think of a lean methodologies board of 70 or so methodologies and you got 25 that you care about, the more you do that, you end up with a command center that's tracking all of your process improvement digitally and allowing you to create an environment in which you're building lean in process improvement into the fabric of how you work. And you can start really small, like with the, actually a lot of our customers start with those huddle boards, just a digital huddle board. So they can see it, they can track it. And then you start adding lean processes into it. You know, we're having uh, issues with quality. We want to drop a 5S process in. Okay, drag that. And yeah, you got that. And and so you you create, it's the the human part is the harder part. So you want to Use the forms that people are used to. You just digitize them. You then want to get them used to the digital huddle board. Then you want to get them used to, okay, well, you now have to track this. So you transition the processes to digital processes as you transition the change management with the plan. Yeah, we get, we've got that, that nice journey. So now we've got to the, the sense of we've, we've, we've oiled the process. We've got that process moving. Where's the sort of the value that we're getting on top of that? um for, by doing that or what's what's the ai and and the, the the rest of the automation adding yeah so you know you should be able to get let's say 10 or 15 percent on key on key processes just by digitizing them and having the ability to track actions and taking action all that kind of stuff now where ai comes in um which it's unclear at this point how much improvement but it's intuitively obvious that it should give you another sort of similar boost um and, and what you do is we've built AI into the entire platform. So um, you let's say you're doing a Gemba walk. Uh, you go through, you identify the areas, what type of waste is going on, what the notes are, how the employees are reacting, et cetera. And then you send that to uh, the AI. There's a, a workflow in our system that says, okay, summarize this. So the AI then generates uh, an executive summary of that Gemba walk and says, here's the issues we found. And you now have a, a view of that. So, you know, that's useful. It saved you 10 minutes or whatever to write a summary, et cetera. And then it says, what action should I take? And then it goes and it generates a list of the correct actions based on all the information it can find through the internet of what you should do about these types of problems. You then have a list of 10 or 12 things you might do. You edit that list and say, I'm going to do these three. You click another button. It generates the action items. You then can assign those to your team. So what you've gotten is an expert co-pilot to help you analyze what's going on in your plant and provide the best feedback it can about what you ought to do about those things. Same thing might be true with an A3 where you might be having power issues. It says, you know, generally power issues in manufacturing plants, you'd say, analyze it, are, are these types of things. You can say, well, I think it's either this or this, what should I do about it? Then goes and analyzes, says, here's the seven things you can do about it. You then can go generate action items, go do things about it. We also can take error codes from machines or, um, you're getting too high of, uh, you know, uh, waste, et cetera, on a stock uh, uh, coming off a of machine data, um, that particular machine um, uh, error code can provide a link to our uh, index system, which can bring up all of the remediation things that you should do instead of just hitting, hey, I want to, uh, I need a maintenance person to come over. It'll give you three or four, as well as AI generated ones based on the internet's understanding of these types of things and say, here's the three things you need to do before you get a maintenance person to come over here and validate you that you did them because no plan I've ever been in has extra people. And so maximizing the impact of what that individual can do for themselves at any point of work is really, really powerful. The next step is you know, going forward in AI is to gather the information from within the plant. 
and then index and run the AI methodologies on those indexes. We used to do it on like vibration analysis in traditional AI. This generative AI can look at data structures within the plant and then create um, you know, options to address issues based on what has worked in the past, what your experts say, what your uh, standard operating procedures say, et cetera. And so getting that intelligence to that person who only has a limited amount of experience um, at the point of work to address issues should have a dramatic effect on on lowering downtime, increasing productivity, et cetera. Now, that makes sense. Um, now, I've been, been working with some another company they were to working with, with II for, um, for a port. Uh, and, and reviewing it that the sense of, of what we're looking at is, is not always something that's um, it's not doing the job for you <laughs> it's supporting the analysis of um, you're still solving the solution you still need the the team that are, uh, are capable and experienced of what the solution is but sometimes picking out where the problem area is or where the bottleneck might have been so that a solution can be applied is, is a very time consuming thing that you don't always have. And sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. So, I mean, they, they ran, was it um, a, a whole period, uh, I think about two, three months of data through through the AI that um, it, it pointed out that it thought that they'd run it very well. They, they, they weren't sure quite when it was going to come up, but there was this one day that they'd pointed out that, yeah, if they'd moved the cranes and pieces around to, to move, uh, move the, the cargo uh, in a slightly different way, they could have uh, got a 30% improvement of, of clearing the dock for, to getting the next ship in. Um, and so it was more that learning and that, that sort of leveling up, like, like you were saying, the sort of the co-pilot of um, uh, helping people learn more about the system that they are using and be more capable and more confident in that system. Um, so, so I like that, that um, this is sort of bringing that in and, and, and helping, helping people help each other. <laughs> yeah, and the more the information gets into the system, you know, as people are entering their into shift data and all those kinds of things, you can, the AI will be able to, and we can get that data in the Praxi system for, for being able to be interrogated by the AI. You'll be able to tell, you know, the uh, your methodologies like, uh, you know, single minute die change and all the other kinds of things might come in to, as you said, you know, the crane needed to move. Maybe, maybe that's a, a, me a methodology that can be captured in, in one of those um, issues that they can then, you know, take on one of these methodologies to support and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so w once we've got <laughs> to get to this sort of nirvana of sort of a, 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 a sort of 20% improvement oiled machine and uh, a much more visualization, are there just sort of a, a, a few steps of, of, uh, of understanding what does that take to get there of, of and, and adopting a system like this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, the, the hardest part, as I said, is the human part. The steps are... Um, analyze the you know where the where the bottleneck problems are and digitize those processes that are now sitting on paper and excel sheets digit get them into a software with a database structure and all those kinds of things um i, I think praxis is the best because the way we've architected every, the entire thing is a massive uh, data lake structure so that it, it's indexed and it's it's quite um good and inexpensive to rapidly build these processes, but it also gives you all of what you need to be able to index and, um, and uh, apply AI to. So digitize the processes. That's the first step. And you'll get huge benefits by doing that. I mean, it's, it's massive. And then the second step, you know, AI is going to get better. It's going to be indexing all the, the solves out on the internet, but also the, the information that's in Praxi and in the databases on the, on the, uh, on site. And so, from there, you'll get another step. So I think it's basically uh, digitize, get digital, and then use the AI tools. And I would also say, you know, that the AI tools are getting more and more, I think they're going to be more and more commoditized. I don't think there's going to be one AI tool. Um, I think there's going to be lots of them, and they're not, it's going to be a price war kind of on which one you address or which ones are specialized in particular things. And so you want a system that has an API system like ours to talk to or a workflow system to talk to different uh, large language models and AIs for different use cases, and then tweak those as we've done. You know, um, we're using a lot of IP to optimize the, the response from the AIs so that when you're trying to solve an AI, a A3 problem or a Gemba problem or a whatever production problem, that the answer comes back clean and understandable and not loose and notorious, if that's a word, 
um, so that you get good data. So I think those are the pieces. Digitize, uh, get a platform to use as part of your AI, and then uh, make sure you have generic connections and can adapt as the AI models adapt. Well, I, mean, I can understand that. I mean, from what you've been sharing, it's it's that that you've got a lot of those sort of kits of parts um, and and sort of uh, sort of generic versions of those solutions that can be refined into the specific versions. But that gets you much farther forward and and and, and allows you to rapidly pull that stuff together rather than having to um, sort of brainstorm it all from scratch or um, write everything in. Um, no, that's 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 great. Um, and and. To, to 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 increase our, our understanding, I mean, um, and and sort of come coming to the end of this sort of interview, I mean, where where do you think the the business challenges or the rewards come from uh, in this space in the next sort of uh, two to three years? Is it just too much of a changing space, or do you think you can sort of look out and see <laughs> where where this stuff's going? Well, I, th I, th you know, you saw with the Sam Altman changes and stuff that the AIs are starting, the, the rumor was that the AIs are starting to do mathematics, which means encryption's in danger was the, the hypothesis. Um, so I think it's unknowable how, how crazy amazing these things are going to get. Um, but I think, uh, it, you know, to, to be pragmatic, you know, from the praxis standpoint, the bets that I would make is 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 thinking about AI in the practical application as a co-pilot, and where in my organization would that ability be dramatically uh, have a dramatic impact? And the AI models are going to get better and better, and their advice is going to be better, and their ability to take action is probably the next step where you can say, "Can you go address this?" Now that'll require you, you know, a whole layer of of uh, security and other issues, but the the bottom line is, I think that's where it's going. So getting getting digital and getting an infrastructure in which you can talk to AI models is is the strategic step, I think, for everybody in the next twelve months. After that, you'll have to reassess based on which models. But that is obvious, and what you have to do. And if you're if you're still running on spreadsheets and going, well, it's going to be okay. I think the reality is your ability to compete from a productivity level is going to get dr dramatically hammered. So I would get digital and get AI ready as quickly as you can. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I mean, th there's there's a, a certain value with with working with this sort of um, common uh, language models that have been made, um, the sort of general purpose AI. But the the value of having your own data and training your own models um, with with your own um, I think that's that is definitely a, a key part um, because the 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 value that they're giving at the moment they're not they're not intelligences as such they are just fast at testing and and evaluating uh, many different options um, and seeing that stuff of of sort of adding it as a that that's the point and that's where where this sort of vocabulary has been coming in uh, more common use of of a copilot as is a it's an assistant to uh, I mean, might, like you might have a, 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 a robot in a cell. It's not doing the whole job. It's assisting you with the heavy lifting or the repetitive um, work that you can then work with. And it's just a support mechanism. So, um, uh, no, I, I appreciate those as the, the, the challenges and the directions of, of where people can level up their business and, and be ready for, for the next stage. And I mean, then just taking that back back down. Then, uh, do you have any um, uh, favorite favorite books or tools outside of um, uh, of working in your your sort of own space that um, that you might like to share as um, a sort of uh, final takeaways that uh, you've been um, uh, been interested in or, or finding uh, in your free time? Yeah, well, I, there's a a great. Um, I've got it here. Let me see here. There's a great um, AI. Oh, I don't have it. There's a little a great newsletter in AI that gives, I think it's called Open AI Cast or something like that. I apologize, I don't have it in front of me, but um, it lists a bunch of tools. Recently, the most interesting tool I've been playing with, uh, I play guitar, and there's a tool called Moises, M-O-I-S-I-S, -S, I believe. And uh, you can play, uh, you can feed it a song and it will remove the lead guitar or the vocals. And um, it's incredible if you think it makes sense because it's identifying each of these um, and therefore has the ability to remove it. But then what you can do is you can play practice your Hendrix solo over, you know, per, uh, uh, Purple Haze or whatever without Hendrix there. 
Um, so it's a very interesting, I don't know that it's at all useful, but if you think about the ability to, what, it, what it's understanding to be able to do that, it's, it's quite remarkable. <laughs> no, that that does that does sound fun. Um, yeah, we've got some some budding musicians at home, so um, uh, maybe I'll have to experiment with them. Yeah, it's a great app. Maybe it's a practical application. It it can do scenario planning. I mean, it was sort of what would have happened to the to the load if we we dropped this part of uh, our production and and worked on a different part today, um, or or if we didn't have this material. There's there's the sort of what ifs that you you get to to run through. Yeah, there's a def because if you think of AI as a giant pattern matching and prediction engine, then you know a lot of things are going to get a lot better. I mean, I think from a supply chain standpoint, AI and Google, you know, looking at weather and everything else that's going on in maps, they're doing that already to figure out the best and optimal supply chain or to let you know when there's likely to be uh, breakdowns in your supply chain. These are the kinds of things that are you know going to be quite um, uh, straightforward uh, to uh, for AI to do. I mean, I guess it's it's a bit like um, when when microchips were first out, we could we could just about have a, a small spreadsheet or a small <laughs> digitization of a, a write a word document or something, uh, or, and then slowly uh, it would be used for trajectories or planning or um, sort of musician munitions and things of what would be the 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 three different branching strategies. Could we explore them? What would be the ten branching strategies? Could we explore them? Uh, and it. it the equivalent of the sort of microchip sort of gone up and up and up and um, that the spaceship that first went to the moon has got less power than the telephone that most people carry around with them um, each day is is just being able to test those scenarios and and bring out the then the two or three that it might be worth um, people exploring. Yeah. It's really interesting that you raise that because we do a lot of work in strategy development as well and we're building um, some examples of that kinds of things to evaluate ideas and um, and to look at news and trends um, in and bring those into our strategy dashboards as well. So I think that's a really interesting space. Um, and there's, therefore, we've, we've come to come to the end. Um, unfortunately, but but we come to the the, the fun closer of. Um, What's the if you were uh, you you're backed into a corner you're allowed to be or, or coming out on top you've got to get 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 across the mountain across the valley um, as the superhero to uh, to save the day um, be it, be one of your clients or be yourself um, what would be the the piece people process technology what would you reach for um, the the superpower that's going to um, uh, save the day um, in your space today. Um, in in the manufacturing, so I think I mean it's just stupid, but I mean it sounds biased, but I think I think we have at Praxi an incredible tool to add value today. I think if you want to if if you want to add massive value on top of everything else you're doing, Praxi's new and it's totally different. The I, we we wanted to be able to help make enterprise software as easy as making PowerPoint. We're not that easy, but we're pretty close, and so we can deliver real value. I mean, we can get turnaround value times in three months. I mean, this is uh, you know, your ROI is incredible. And I think the, the time to do this with the AI and everything else is now. So um, I, I would reach for Praxi. Just to, to wrap up, uh, if, if people are interested to, to find out more or, or see how this works, I appreciate it. It's a visual tool and we're talking in a, in a non-visual medium. So I hope we've painted enough of a picture for everyone else. But um, if they want to find out uh, a bit more or what, what sort of um, uh, customers are you working with or, or looking to, to talk to um, and, and how can we get in contact? Plant managers, manufacturing executives, process owners in manufacturing, all of those folks, we have real value for them. They can come to Praxi, P-R-A-X-I-E dot com, um, and you can set up an appointment to get a demo. My email is michael.lynch, L-Y-N-C-H at Praxi dot com, and you can reach out directly to me as well. Super, so short and sweet. Um, well, that's very kind of you to to join us and um, uh, introduce us to to your world and sort of that that flexible process improvement. Um, so thank you. Thanks, Tristan. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you. You too. Thanks for joining us again today on the Cliff Notes podcast, where we look at the people, process, and technology that's moving businesses forward. If you'd like to get in touch with me and my guest. Uh, we'll be available on the cliffnotespodcast.com website or on social media, and we always like to hear from you. So keep moving your business forward. <laughs>